Well, qualifying was a little bit greasy, uh, particularly in the bottom half of the circuit. Second chicane was really very, very slippery. Uh, the fast stuff on the first section of the circuit was actually fine. Conditions were tricky as we were on wet tyres and the track was drying. So in the corners towards the end of the session, we were getting a dry line, so you had to make the most of the conditions towards the end. The track was still wet, probably a few seconds off when you might have thought about slicks. It's a couple of bits of dry line in places, but overall too, too greasy. It's difficult to get any bite. Um, and then just traffic, traffic, traffic all the time. I qualified 14th which is okay. I was hoping for probably a couple of places better, but not much more than that. Well, if the conditions stay like this for the race, and I think the best choice would be wet, just as you've got that added uh, grip on the softer tyre. Um, if you go out on six, I think there's a good chance you can just spin off. It's forecast to stop raining at 11, so that gives us an hour. So decisions to be made for race one of the Radical Challenge at Alton Park. Let's guide you through the grid. Bradley Smith sits there on pole position and alongside him is the current championship leader, Steve Burgess. A big thumbs up from him. Row two of the grid is Brian Caldwell and alongside is the orange car of Jack Lang. And it's number 52, Mark Richards and Brian Murphy that line up on the third row of what is a very full grid at Alton Park. The five second board goes up. The red lights are about to come on. Number four, Bradley Smith and number two, Steve Burgess on the front row of the grid. And as the lights go out, it's a good start from both front row men. Looks as though Darren Nelson was a little bit slower away, but it's going to be Bradley Smith that leads as they head up towards Old Hall Corner for the first time. This huge grid of cards filing its way through Old Hall Corner. And by the look of things, there's a spin there. I think that was John Caldwell that had the spin. There was another red car on the grass on the right-hand side, but thankfully everybody has safely avoided them and they should be able to continue in the race themselves as well through Cascades, along towards Lakeside. Bradley Smith in the lead of the race. Steve Burgess in second. It's Brian Caldwell in third. Jack Lang in fourth. And Joe Stables in fifth place. So the top four as they were on the grid. But Joe Stables from eighth on the grid up to fifth already. A good start from Joe. So Tony Wells at the wheel of the green car has slotted himself through into sixth position. And what is a huge grid of cars. Some 30 cars having qualified this morning. You can see the battles in the early stages absolutely raging down through the field. Number 72. Cliff Butler with his hands rather full. Number 46 trying to squeeze its way through. Couldn't quite make it through, though. So here comes our race leader in towards a breaking area for his lops. Steve Burgess following him. There goes Jack Lang, car number seven, new to the championship this year. Converted from single-seaters, having raced in the Formula Jedi Championship previously. We saw him do a part season of BRDC Formula 3 as well last year. But a couple of wins under the belt for Jack Lang, and he's going well so far in the early stages here at Alton Park as they head through Druids and then start to head under the Warwick Bridge and up towards the braking area for Lodge Corner at the completion of the first lap of the race. Bradley Smith starting to build the advantage, isn't he now? Some good fights going on further down through the order. This is number 23, Jason Rishover. He's got his hands fairly full, hasn't he, with the car that sits directly behind him. That's Mark Richards, who is a little bit slow away. And that's another good fight as well going on. Paul Allen fighting away to try and keep Darren Nelson behind. So through Old Hall Corner for the second time. You can see the advantage that Bradley Smith is beginning to build. He's not eligible for championship points, though, this weekend. So Steve Burgess in second place will be conscious of that and know full well that as long as he stays where he is, it's still maximum championship points as far as he's concerned. So along Lakeside, you can see Steve Burgess now under a little less pressure than he was on the lap prior from Brian Cordwell. There goes number 95, Jack Stables. He has certainly well and truly settled into fifth position. This is David Franklin fighting away with Andy Chittenden towards the tail end of the field. They're having a good little fight. The front runners, though, already safely out of Shallow Hill's corner and heading up into the braking area for Britons. So through the left, through the right, and then hard on the accelerator through the left that brings them over Hilltop, which is where our race leader is. And then from there, it's downhill in towards the braking area for the tricky chicane. Look at the fight that's going on for second place. There's no let up in the pressure for Steve Burgess because Brown Caldwell is not letting him go. Brown Caldwell needs to attack and defend at the same time because Jack Lang, that car, the number seven car, is right on his heels. And the single seater convert looking to try and get himself into the podium places if he can here. So leaders safely through Clay Hill. And as we look back towards Hilltop, there's a big spin and off has gone the number 44 car in the hands of Matt Brooks. So Fingers crossed he can get recovered. Past him goes number 10, which is John Cordwell. He's recovering from his spin at the first corner of the race. And we've still got this great fight going on between Paul Allen and Darren Nelson. Just ahead of them is the car of Jack Manchester. Back of the seventh is well and truly on as well. Jason Rishover fighting away all of the time with Mark Richards. Then Paul Allen, who 
had Darren Nelson look to try and go up the inside of him. Wasn't to be, though, so the order still remains the same. The two black cars, then the white car of Jack Manchester, and then the two red cars. So out of the left-hander at Cascades, on towards Lakeside. We still have, hanging on to that position, Jason Rishover. Despite the very close attentions of Mark Richards, Jason Rishover hanging on to seventh place. Mark Richards had a thought about going up the inside at Shadow's corner, then decided discretion was most certainly the better part of Valor. That's allowed him to be caught a little bit by that car there, number 15, which is the car in the hands of Jack Manchester. Jack, who so far this year has been a regular feature towards the sharp end of the grid. We have seen him on the podium, but for the moment, he's having to be content with sitting behind the number 52 car in the hands of Mark Richards. It was a slow getaway for Mark. He qualified fifth quickest. And he's now down into what will he be, eighth place. This is the battle for tenth still. Paul Allen fighting away with Darren Nelson. They still remain in exactly the same order. And they're not exactly making inroads into the trio ahead. So despite the fact we've got a battle for seventh and eighth place, they're not slowing each other up and allowing this battle for tenth to close up. So out of Druids. Underneath the Warwick Bridge once more they come. The black car of Jason Rishover, the black car with the sudden white stripes to it in the hands of Mark Richards, and the white car with its martini stripes of Jack Manchester, and then these two red machines, Paul Allen being hounded all of the way. There is no let-up at all from Darren Nelson. He continually is asking the questions of Paul Allen, and as yet, there's been no chink in the armour, has there? He's hung on to the place, and these two now may well get caught by the next of the cars, which is beginning to close up behind, which is... John McLeod, who qualified down in 23rd position and is starting to make a bit of progress now. You could just see him in the back of shot a second ago, so he's closing in on this pair. Here comes the recovering John Cordwell, managing to squeeze his way through and up the inside of the number 99 car. So that is Konstantin Kugachev that has now lost the position. So that's up to 23rd place now for John Cordwell, but still with huge amounts of work to do. The battle for second hasn't resolved itself either, has it? There's still pretty much nose to tail. The order still remains the same. Steve Burgess, then Brown Cordwell, then Jack Lang. And as yet, these three have been pretty much inseparable throughout the course of this race. All of the time, whilst Bradley Smith, the race leader, is building the advantage. You can see the relative gap now. So here comes Bradley Smith underneath the Warwick Bridge and up towards Lodge Corner. And only now into sight do we see Steve Burgess in second place. So the advantage has certainly just been built up by Bradley Smith who was a champion in Radical Clubmans he was a champion in this equivalent challenge, he was a European Radical champion as well so Bradley very much used to pedalling very quick Radical sports cars and at the moment showing a clean pair of heels to Steve Burgess and Corbyn getting ever closer to him though, using all of the curves just managing to stay within the confines of the circuit Further down through the order, we've got some, some fantastic fights going on. Number 72, Cliff Butler, is under pressure. He's got Elliot Goodman weaving around behind him. And they're not that far behind them. I think that was John Morris, wasn't it? Car number 34. So that's a, a good little fight down towards the bottom of the teams, almost into the top 20. Simon Garmston is just behind them as well. And then I think it's the blue and white car of Mark Kignett. So that's a, a great little fight that's going on for the latter part of the teams. As we then head back towards the front of the pack and well, it looks as though Steve Burgess is under less pressure now, isn't he, from number 66, uh, which is Brian Cordwell. The second of the two red cars has just fallen away and started to drop into the clutches of the orange machine in the hands of Jack Lang. All of these identical 1500cc Suzuki-powered cars, 690 kilograms, all running the controlled Dunlop slick tyre as well. So, as they now work their way out of his lops through the right-hander, at Nickerbrook, what can Jack Lang do? Elsewhere down through the order, we've still got that great battle raging which involves that car there, another long-time radical racer, Simon Garmston, at the wheel of car number 13, the very patriotically liveried machine. He's looking to try and get up onto terms with Peter White at the same time as he needs to watch his mirrors as well because the blue and white car of Mark Hignett's not too far behind and they're all trying to chase down John Morris, number 34, who's the cork in the bottle rather, isn't he? At the front of this little quartet of cars through his lops, then through the right-hander at Nickerbrook that bring them up towards Clay Hill. And as we now look for the battle for 11th place, here's John McLeod. I said about his progress through the order earlier on. He qualified lower than we would have usually expected, John. 23rd quickest. Well, he's now managed to get himself ahead 
of Darren Nelson is now really putting Paul Allen under pressure. Is he going to have a quick look as they head up towards the breaking area for Old Hall Corner? Had a look, but Paul Allen had got the move covered, so it's still Paul Allen from John McLeod, then from the car of Darren Nelson. And John McLeod this time, is he going to have another look at Cascades? No, thinks better of it, follows him through the left-hander. And now, if he can get a good exit here, the lakeside could be the opportunity where he might be able to squeeze his way through on the rope towards Island Bend. No, still Paul Allen that hangs on to the play, so Shell Oil's corner presents an opportunity. Is John McLeod going to go for it? No, still line astern as they turn their way through Shell Oil's. So, great little fight further down through the order. Paul Allen having to work terribly hard to cling on to his position. Quicker John McLeod. He, I'm sure at this stage of the race is the quicker car. He just can't get past, and that's because of good driving by Paul Allen, just making sure he positions the car where it's... Uh, very, very difficult for John McLeod to try and work his way through. He's going to have a quick look again at his lops. No nose to tell. They go through his lops. And Darren Nelson is there and poisoned, ready to pounce. And then up the inside at Nickerbrook, a great move up the inside. Surely Paul Allen is going to have to yield one place. He might have to lose two here. Yep, because Darren Nelson's gone through. Great driving from John McLeod. Got the nose up the inside, heading in towards Nickerbrook. Good driving from Paul Allen to leave in the space. But he's unfortunately lost two places now. Here now comes what is the battle for fourth and fifth position because down to fourth is number 66, Brian Cordwell. The orange car of Jack Lang has gone ahead as the safety car comes out. So we've had the shuffle in the order. Jack Lang is up to third place. Brian Cordwell was down into fourth. Joe Stables was in fifth, but the safety car is out on circuit, which is going to bunch the pack back up. And for Bradley Smith, that is probably the last thing that he wanted in reality. He had built a very, very solid advantage. And with the safety car out there neutralising the race, it's going to bunch them all back up again here at Alton Park. So all of that hard work done in the early stages of the race, Bradley Smith is going to have to do it again, I would expect. But there's very little time remaining in the race, and I fear, as the safety car still has its lights on, that this race may well now end up uh, finishing behind the safety car, because the safety car is coming through Lodge Corner. And unless it peels its way into the pit lane, we are going to finish this race behind the safety car here at Alton Park for the first of our Radical Challenge races. Yep, so the chequered flag is shown. So the cars come through behind the safety car, which means that it's going to be Bradley Smith that claims victory in the first race for the Radical Challenge here this weekend. Steve Burgess comes through in second position with Jack Lang in third place. Brian Cordwell, Joe Stables and Tony Wells complete the top six in what was a very hard-fought race. That's here for the race winner. Yeah, so we're back this weekend, um, running as, as a solo driver, and um, you know it's good to get a few more laps in the car. Um, the team has done a fantastic job. The car's set up really well. Um, so yeah, great first race, and hopefully we can get a good result in um, two and three.